trouble. It's a perilous place. And when you walk a dangerous path, my son, it's best to take it one step at a time. Hello everyone and welcome to PlayStation Access. My name is Rosie and this is Baldur's Gate 3. Now I'm fibbing of course, it's obviously Lies of P. Coming to PS4 and PS5 on the 16th of September if you have early access and the 19th of September if not. We've been playing the final game and I've already put over 20 hours into it. And oh my gosh, I have not been able to put this game down, I can't stop thinking about it and I have so much to say already. Honestly, it's an action game everyone needs to try. So let's not hide diddly delay, let's start with the story. And don't worry, I'll be making this video as spoiler free as possible. Have you ever heard the fairy tale about a mischievous wooden puppet? I am completely hooked on this tale. Loosely set on Carlo Collodi's 1883 story, The Adventures of Pinocchio, you're a puppet who's been woken up to help a city called Krat. A city filled with puppets who've killed most civilization and also want to kill you. A deathly and gruesome disease which has infected most survivors and the remnants of humanity trying to escape, with broken carts, suitcases and many dead bodies laying all over the place. Oh, and there are these violent people in masks. It gets a one star from me on TripAdvisor. You're in the middle of all this, asked to figure out what caused the puppets to enter a puppet frenzy and to save Krat. No biggie. Now, the basic premise is already gripping, with mysteries and tragedies surrounding you as you progress, and I've been interested in the story of Pinocchio since I was a child, so seeing elements of the story pop up in the game, I go, Ooh! But the thing that grips me the most is the lying mechanic. Very early on in the game, you're introduced to the concept of lying, which can be used to help you. Now, you may be wondering, Rosie, this is a gameplay element. Why are you talking about it in the story part of this video? Well, that's because it plays a huge role in your character and what happens in the story. You're a puppet, and in this world, puppets are made with four absolute rules. The Grand Covenants. They must obey their creator's commands, they must not harm humans, they protect and serve humans and the city of Kratz, and they cannot lie. And here you are, a puppet who has the ability to act human and lie. Throughout the game, you're faced with situations where you can choose to tell the truth or lie. These could seem like harmless things, like telling the hotel that you're human in order to get inside, or it makes you question your morals, as you want to be honest, but the scenario they put you in is so heart-ripping that you may lie if you think it's best for the individual. But they always seem like huge decisions, like will you tell the suspicious character that the hotel is a safe place they can go to? And if you know from software style games, it's not the best idea to trust everyone. Every decision you make affects the story, as you're told that something about you is changing. As I'm writing this video, I haven't finished the game, but I am constantly guessing what all of this means. Is lying a good thing? Sophia seems to encourage that you lie here and there, as it makes you more human. But as we all know, lying is not a nice thing to do. So do I lie to act more human, rather than a puppet, and potentially turn into a human at the end? Will lying make things harder for me in the long run, as characters won't trust me and potentially hate me? Or do I tell the truth no matter what to seem like a good boy and make Geppetto a proud father? But if I tell the truth, will I become a real boy in the end? Or will I remain a puppet as I have been following one of the four rules of puppets? And also, who is this person and should I bring them into the hotel? I want to help everyone, but I can't attack whilst I'm in the hotel. So if you dare go killing everyone, it will be based on my decision alone and I can't do anything. Ah! I have so many questions, and my curiosity just keeps on growing as I play. I just can't wait to see what happens. Almost as compelling as the story is the world. Kratz is a beautiful, eerie, Victorian, I think, starred city where no corner is safe, creating a world where you can't help but think of how pretty the shops and buildings look, only then to be reminded that you're in danger and get slapped in the face by a puppet. The area is filled with so many posters of events and buildings and landmarks that you can see how lively life was before the frenzy happened. And even in the quieter areas, when you're outside of the city, I can't help but look around the ruins of these poor destroyed homes and buildings, imagining what life was like for occupants before everything went bad, and seeing how much damage the events have caused. And with these visuals, you get hardly any sound, creating an eerie atmosphere reminding you of how empty this place is. The only noises you hear as you roam these locations are the creepy sounds of lurking enemies 
A sad animal calling? A distant piece of music playing through rundown speakers or gramophones? In my head, I can't help but feel they're playing either because no one is there to stop it or because someone is enjoying their last moments of life. Especially since you come across an organ with nobody playing it! Or you, rolling about breaking every object you see. I may have just named a few examples after I said, there's hardly any sound, but it's used so subtly it just engulfs you into this beautiful yet sadly lifeless world. And that also means that when someone does talk to you in the world, you feel the weight behind it. Best of luck to you, my friend. So who occupies these lifeless areas? Well, mostly the enemies and bosses. Bosses are a big deal in these games, so don't worry, I won't spoil the surprise and show you all of them. Let's start with the enemies. They are aggressive, relentless and so creepy. Their movement seems so unsteady that even when I feel I've learnt the timings of their attacks and their speed of movement, I still either miss or get slapped in the face when I'm trying to do a perfect guard. Or I should just get good. And they all have a variety in designs and sizes, introduce different styles of fighting, cause different status build-ups and have different weaknesses. So you're always on your toes and changing your strategies when exploring certain areas. Puppets can be quite slow with their attacks, as you see them gearing up their mechanics to hit you, but they're strong, and if you get cornered by two of them, prepare to heal if you escape. And when you enter the outskirts of Krat for the first time, you're introduced to a new type of enemy who I won't say a lot about for now, but their attacks and movements are, for the most part, much quicker and aggressive, as they just chase and attack you constantly. The bosses are as cool as you'd hope. You have grand bosses where you're essentially in an arena, but you also have some mini bosses who can just appear in an area you're exploring. You're just plodding along, surviving, only to see a health bar pop up and you think, oh god, you're a boss? But with these ones, you get more room to fight them and can use the area to your advantage, even if it's just running away for a bit to catch your breath. The main bosses have the same lovely build-up you get from From Software fights. You'll read leaflets or talk to certain characters and hear tales about what was happening before the puppet frenzy. And you'll often think, huh, this character is mentioned a lot. Are they potentially the boss? and then feel really proud of yourself when they turn up with a massive health bar. And then when you see how they look, you go, whoa, you look amazing and terrifying, but you have an adorable face and I want to cuddle you. Okay, maybe not. In terms of difficulty, I'd say it varies depending on your character build. I know this is a typical answer for these types of games, but it's true. For some bosses, I used a big and heavy sword, so I do big damage but there were bosses that were quick and nimble, so I had to change my weapon to one I could actually get some hits in before they dodged. But the shifts mean you never know what to expect. A big hard hitter boss who loves using fire or electricity to help them, or a boss which purely focuses on their skills with a weapon and speed. <sighs> Surviving is a hell of a time. It makes me excited for each boss to see what challenge I face, but when these bosses hit, they hit hard. But if you're someone who is thinking, oh god, these bosses are intimidating, but I really want to play, don't worry, as in front of every main boss gate I've come across so far, there is a birdbath looking thing where you can use star fragments to summon a helper. They mainly get absolutely clobbered, but that might just be what you need to get a head start on the boss until it's just you and them. And later down the line, you get wish stones, which can give you or them a little bit of a boost, like raising their defense for a limited amount of time. I'm making them seem like useless punching bags, but they do attack too, which is great when you team up and go in there slashing them. But unluckily for them, I find them better for distraction than attacking. Also, your ergo drops right outside the boss gate, so pick them up and grind for some more if you'd like to. And speaking of attacking, let's talk about the combat. And yes, you will hear some comparisons to Bloodborne. I love the combat. I may be biased as Bloodborne is one of my favourite games ever, and in my recent From Software experiences I've gone with a character who is big on health and strength so they can carry a big shield and sword. But I have loved coming back to the quicker and more aggressive style of playing a game like this. Let's get it over with, how is it like Bloodborne? Well, you're encouraged to go into the fights aggressively, be it to regain some health after guarding, to recharge a pulse cell if you've run out, to do a super duper strong attack when the enemy's health has this white flash, or simply because the enemy health regenerates if you leave them alone for some time. But the combat itself is also really quick, 
as you and the boss dodge and slide all over the place. And like all From Software games, you have a visceral attack too. But how is it not like Bloodborne? Well, you guard for a start, having a standard guard which reduces damage you take and lets you regain some health afterwards, and a perfect guard which you need to time perfectly to take no damage at all and to have a higher chance of staggering enemies and breaking their weapons. You have Fable Arts which are cool abilities stuck to the blade and handle of your weapon, like your blade having a 3 slash ability whilst your handle increases your attack for a bit, and with most weapons you can customise which blade and handle you want to suit your needs which is brilliant. You have your Legion Arm which you can switch to give you different abilities, you have a graph for your P organ which lets you use Quartz for permanent upgrades, and, and this is something I absolutely love, you can repair your weapon on the go. I adore this mechanic. It saved me so many times during battles and when approaching battles, I'm always changing my grindstones to add an elemental charge easily to my blade, and it's just so satisfying to fix your blade on your elbow. And just to round up, the music is as good as you'd expect. During the fights, it's grand and epic, completely hooking you into the action of the fights. The theme of Hotel Crot is soothing and makes me feel cosy yet classy. Especially with all the warm lighting in this place. Just put me in this nice looking spot and let me have a cup of tea in a posh cup. And I really like how you can collect music records, and when you play them in the hotel you gain some humanity. Again, I have no idea what this means, but I've thoroughly enjoyed every piece of music I've heard so far. Come on Rosie, that's enough rambling for now. Fine! I wanted to go play more Liza P anyway! But to summarise, I hope it's clear I have thoroughly enjoyed my time with this game so far. I think it's great and I'm already excited to hop back into it once I've finished to see what an all truth or an all lie run looks like, to try different weapons and different legion arms and to see if in another run I will understand what on earth these puppets are saying because I want to know so badly. I've been capturing gameplay for this video on Dave's save, thanks Dave, and I'm already seeing so many differences between our runs. I can just already see myself putting so many more hours into this game, and I'm not lying when I say you should definitely give it a shot. <laughs> Take care, you don't get torched. Thank you all for listening to me talk about Lies of P. Are you looking forward to trying it out? Do you plan on telling the truth, lying, or maybe a bit of both? Let me know in the comments below. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to see more videos like this, and hit that notification bell so that you stay up to date with the world of PlayStation. Thank you all so much for watching.